G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. Today we're back up at the Gungador Park in Western Australia and we're going to be doing the Honey Eater Walk which from the car park in total is uh, I think it's around the 8.2 kilometres which is just a smidgen over 5 miles. It's a fairly easy walk, it's meant to be and the weather is wet and it's forecast to be wet for at least the next 10 days but it's still beautiful out here Along the trail, we've got little placards here telling us about everything. This is the one about they marry the Eucalyptus califa phyla, and it says the Mary grows to a smaller size to Jarrah. Like the Jarrah, the bark is rough but grows in grey brown rectangular patches, whereas the bark of the Jarrah is stringy. This uh, uh, attractive tree grows to 40 metres tall with creamy masses of flowers in summer and autumn. Pink flowered variants also occur. The large honkinuts or fruits of the Mary are perhaps its most distinguishing feature. As the fruits mature, they are a major source of food for the cockatoos, parrots and possums. Another feature of the Mary is the red gum that exudes from the bark when damaged by fires or borers. It is not a true gum but a res resinous substance containing tannin and is known as kino or kino. The botanical word calophylla means beautiful leaf. How about that? And these are the honky nuts of the Mary. The honky nuts of the Mary. Now they're not a hiker's best friend. Many of people have trodden on them twisted and even broken at ankles so watch out for them Next placard is the Wilson's Grevillea and it's the Grevillea wilsoni and it says this species is a low shrub usually between 0.5 and 1 meter tall. The fine branches are smooth or covered with fine straight silky hairs. The spiky 30 to 60 millimeter leaves are divided almost to the mid rib and have secondary divisions. The conspicuous or oh sorry the conspicuous Bright red flowers appear on the ends of the branches between May and November. The calyx is smooth on the outside and hairy on the inside. The flowers are visited by nectar feeding birds, especially the western spinebill. Wilson's grevillea grows on gravel and clay soil in the Darling Range between 2J and Bustleton. It is quite common in the Bungador Park. Nice. And we've got another one next to us. And this is one, is the Rosenberg Monitor. This lit light, starts again. The Rosenberg's Monitor, Varanus Rosenbergi. 
This large monitor grows to one meter in length. Its background color is dark gray to black, peppered with yellow to gray spots. It enjoys a varied habitat and lives in coastal heaths, humid woodland and forests in the south of Western Australia. It is mostly terrestrial and shelters in burrows, which it digs for itself, uh, hollow logs and rock crevices. Rosenberg's monitor feeds on small animals, refuse and carry-on. They are active in summer and autumn, using speed to escape danger. The tree martin, Hirundo nigicans. It says a tree martin is the commonest and most widespread of our swallows. It is a small bird, 12 to 13 centimeters long, with square cut tail, brownish white rump, and the rest of upper parts black, glossed purplish blue. Tree martins breed in southern Australia and spend the winter in northern Australia and on islands to the north. In the southwest, they are most numerous during the summer and join their allegedly northward in, uh, migration in early autumn. They uh, are usually in pairs or small flocks when breeding and large aggregations, sometimes thousands in off season. They favour wooded habitats and feed entirely on flying insects. They breed from mid August to early November. Nests are holes in trees and the four oval shaped eggs are laid on a small mat of leaves at the end of the hollow. Their twittering calls are a feature of Bungador Park. This is a boot cleaning uh, station and this is to clean your boots as you can imagine and it's to help stop the spread of dieback which is killing a lot of the, the bushland where people aren't taking care so let's make sure we use it Stop the die back. As you can see, this lifts up, it allows you to roll your foot in and out on the roller. That's the best one I've seen work anywhere in the Western Australian bush. So the upkeep is good, good on you guys and girls. poles on this walk. Are they 100% necessary? No, it's classed as an easy one. Would I recommend them? Yes, I would. I was just talking about the honky nuts earlier. How easy it is to step on one of them. Go flying flat on your ass or even break your ankle. And that's your day ruined. So, yeah, they, they do make it easier.
one thing you will notice walking on this loop trail is you can still hear the traffic because if my judgment's right we've still got southwest highway that way and the albany highway on that way so we are going to hear the noise of the traffic every now and then well most of the time so far but after a while you just forget it's there and just carry on enjoying being out here in nature I thought I heard someone trying to start a chainsaw and I kept looking around and looked up and on the top of one of the trees back there <laughs> I was surprised there's uh, about three or four ducks up there and cracking away in it it's a bit odd to see in the middle of the brush when you normally see them floating around in the, the local pond and everything but I suppose it should be expected That is. Look at all this. Okay. And this view on the other side is the sun. This is breaking through the clouds and the trees there. Isn't that just great? And I've been out for about an hour now just walking, taking my time looking at stuff. And I've done less than two kilometres of the 8.2. Uh, yeah, those little signs I've been showing you and reading out it tells you about all the animals and all the plants and trees. There's so many of them. What I've decided to do is finish this walk. I may stop at one or two, but it looks like there's so many. I'll, I'll, I'll be coming back when the weather's better probably in two or three months time when it warms up uh, hopefully the bush will be looking a little bit different then and I'll go through some more and then when it warms up even more in the summer when it's really up in the 30s we'll have a, a different look to the bush uh, yeah I'll go through some more of the signs if not the rest of them and show you the walk but today I'm going to carry on carry on making this video and just enjoying being out here. I see, even though you can hear the traffic, we've got all the, the cockies up this side I can hear. Yeah, it's just beautiful. I see a little bit blue in the sky, so that's good. Uh, they have forecast rain all day, every day, for at least the next 10 days. So, hopefully, we'll get a few breaks and find somewhere just to sit down for a little while. Okay, let's get on. Alright, we've got another boot cleaning station leading out of here, so as it says there, dive back protection area, cleaning station. So from this point on, it's dive back free. So the section between the first one I showed you and this one, yeah, it's had dive back. So remember, clean your boots and spray. Let's just quickly show you, John. Here you go. Scrub footwear, pump ball, spray heel to toe. What are pathogens? Pathogens are disease uh, causing organisms that can harm nature. Examples include uh, or Pythophthala dieback and the chytrid frog fungus. Many can live in soil, water and organic material. 
uh, bushwalking can spread pathogens. To minimise the risk, clean footwear, avoid moist conditions, keep to the track. Uh, 2.5 kilometers in now and this is the steepest decline on the trail or on the walk so far so going back to your poles here yeah, I think a set of poles because you've got all the pea gravel here and like I said combine with some honky nuts but the views are just beautiful from here oh it is beautiful. And on this side, look at this. All right, let's carry on walking. Not far back there, there's a sign. Uh, telling us distances and going by that sign I've got another 5.7 kilometers to get back to the car at Albany Highway See there, but they're uh, eyeballing me. I'll see if I can zoom in. That'd be great. Okay, it's about three and a half kilometers in, and we've got a bench. And the view from the bench is what someone would say <sighs> fantastic. Overlooking Armadale there, and right in the distance, I suppose on a clear day, you should be able to see the city through the trees. That's the city of Perth. But yeah, perfect spot for a little picnic. And on the bench, there is a this. This is a Jared bench. Thank you, Bongador Park, for letting us and others sit here a while surrounded by such beauty. The world hurries by. Does anyone take time to notice what's right in front of their eyes? And it's got the Bongador Park Environmental Group Inc. and City of Armadale 2020. And that's behind you. Even in winter, when you're doing anything like this, don't forget your water. Because uh, probably about half a care and the most past the bench, you've got a, a nice big incline and it's a nice rocky one. And especially on a day like today when it's been raining, it's wet and slippery. So I had to take my time and concentrate. So I'm trying to get my breath back now and have a drink. And remember, 
like I've said in some of my other videos, there's a big thing about only sip and take a small amount at a time. No. What I've been taught on the survival courses I've done is all that happens when you sip a little bit at a time is it goes straight to your organs and then it doesn't actually go to all your organs that need it. So you don't actually get rid of the thirst, your water goes down and you get no benefit from it. Take a good couple of gulps, like a small cup full amount and about the 350-400 ml minimum and then that means your organs get some and your stomach gets some and you've got some uh, in reserve so the water actually lasts you longer and you'll do better. All right, one more sip and I better carry on. I'm sure I'll lock it so I don't lose any. Right, everybody catches a couple of Grey kangaroos up here. I've changed the camera to 4K so I can zoom in and hopefully you'll get to see them. But just on the left of the track, his ears up, he's eyeballing me and he's listening to me talking. I think his mate is just, oh, there he goes. There they both go, so he goes. Ah, oh, too young and an adult by the looks of it. Let's see if they'll stay there as I walk by. There he is. Hey little buddy. Not so small, it's a female by the looks of it. I love it when you get to see the kangaroos and the wildlife. It's just so beautiful, it's so special to be able to get out here and get to see them. The uh, sun's coming out now and I'm beginning to feel a bit warm, especially after I've just done a few inclines and declines. After that bench, I mentioned the one, but as I started to go back down and level out, I ran around a corner and there was another even steeper one. And it would have been raining and it was a rocky one, lots of rocks on it, loose. I had to take my time to get up there and came down and then came back up another one. And I'm actually going up an incline now, not as steep, but still after them, it's still an incline. They said this was an easy rated walk. If you're only carrying a day pack, I reckon it'll be between the easy and the medium. Came in a pack like I am now, we're looking at about a medium. If you've never walked before, I'd say it'd start at a medium, going up between medium and difficult with them inclines the way they are. But later on in the year when it's a bit drier, uh, not so wet, and not having to wear wet weather gear. I'll class it between the easy and the medium. But it's still worth doing it. Just, just beautiful out here. Look at this behind me. I don't know if you can hear all the birds going. I'm about halfway. Yeah, about halfway or just over halfway. 
and I've been going for probably two hours. As you can see, another boot cleaning station there. So we're coming to the second area designated as dieback. So remember, clean your boots. Probably the cleanest of my boots have been in a long time in the bottom, but clean your boots. Just made it to I said, Christian College, the school, probably here. Uh, 2.9 kilometers to go until we get back to Albany Highway. Uh, you're in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out of dieback areas. So I've just used the boot cleaner again. I think this is going to be the fourth time going into a dieback area and there'll be no doubt another one to leave the dieback area and remember always use them you need to keep this beautiful bush beautiful and I don't want it dying off now the walk after them a few steep inclines and declines I was talking about leveled off for the last kilometre and a half, two kilometres and it hasn't been so bad we are gradually going up an incline here it doesn't look too serious at the moment so let's hope it stays this way uh, the rain has held off for about the last hour which is good if you wanted to take a break just down here at the notice board there is another bench you can sit on and have a rest so you don't have to worry about going all the way around here without a rest. As you saw we had one about three and a half kilometres in. This one here now. And like I said we've got 3.9 kilometres, no 2.9 kilometres to go until we're back at Albany Highway. So it's not too bad a place to sit down and provided by them, not Mother Nature. Let's carry on. Just less than 1.5 kilometres to go now to the Albany Highway. The rain's held off, which is really nice. Temperature hasn't been bad. Yeah, I've opened the vents up on my jacket and I've been very comfortable. Well, worth it if you've got a jacket where you've got the pit zips. Um, look, this has got uh, zips on the front that opens it up to vents. So it gets the vent from the front and under the arms. Yeah, the walk's been really nice. So we've had then three serious inclines and declines. But apart from that, it's been a steady walk. 
and the views have been fantastic even with a cloudy sky most of the way it's been really really nice yeah seen a few I'll get corner and kangaroos on here they is it black poured wallabies so yeah I've seen quite a few of the black poured wallabies up here beautiful little ones <laughs> the last two I just saw about a quarter of a kilometer back they went to start moving a lot to me I filmed them hopefully it's picked it up one load of honky nuts Let's be careful and then they realized I wasn't going to do anything to them and they heads down bums up and carried on eating their tucker and then when I walked off they looked at me and carried on eating their tucker again so they must be used to people or they can sense it that they're not going to be hurt uh, I hope nobody thinks about hurting the poor little things that's beautiful it's beautiful there beginning to hear the road again more and more so you can tell we're getting closer for that one I know roughly where we are two I've been actually using the all trails map on my phone today just testing that see how accurate it is I've tested it before but on here if you're thinking of using uh, a mobile app the all, all trails seems to be pretty accurate now it's not one so I've got another one where that shows you how far you are from your next uh, if you're walking on the building track it'll tell you how far you are away from your next shelter the next town and the next junction sort of thing the all trails just shows you where you are on track but it is pretty damn accurate so if you don't want anything like the gut hooks where you're not going to be going you just want to do local walks like this which gut hooks has most of them on uh, uh, all trails has most of them on them uh, you can put an area and it will search all little trails around you the all trails is a good app i don't get paid for saying anything about their app it'd be nice if they did give me some money for it but yeah i just thought it'd be useful for you to know because it's worked really well on here it clocks up the average of how far you've walked too but you can actually see it on your phone where on the trail you are and how far you go away just by sight so if you're not bothered about how many steps you're taking or how fast you're walking the actual how far you have walked got to go it's good for that where you can just look at it say oh yeah i'm there ah let's carry on so on that note i'm going to carry on too Turn back onto the track, heading back to the car now. It's been a beautiful walk. Loved all of it. Even them steep inclines and declines, you know. Had a little bit of a moan about it. And I saw a path and they took me to do some fantastic views. So they're, they're worth climbing up and down. So, yeah, just take your time and you'll have no trouble. Uh, remember, walking poles. Especially for them bits and all the honky nuts and the pea gravel. It'll help you slipping on your ass and hurting yourself. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have and you're not already a subscriber, please go down below and click on the subscribe button. Click on the notification bell next to it and select all. Click the thumbs up, the like button. And share with all your mates if you want to and family. And if you are already a subscriber, again, I thank you very much. So until next time, get out there, have some fun, and take care. Mm -hmm.